or five, we would come down on the boat with it. When, like, this would be spring the year, they're picking it up, you know, painting it up and putting it away for the summer. Mm -hmm. um, but my brother's two years younger, man, we were coming down with him. And then when, when I was 17 years old, I quit school and went on board the boat with him. Did you, were you born in Deal, on Deal Island? I was born right here. Uh, over on the right, right side here, right on. In fact, my grandparents, great grandparents, settled uh, at the other end of the island. Oh, yeah. Driver Daniel, yeah, that was my great grandfather. Huh. And he, uh, him and James T. Daniel. So you grew up on the water and you started working as a waterman when you were 17, you said? Yeah, that's when I started right in full time, yeah. Okay. I quit school and. Well, I only had uh, two years left in school. Uh, What's your favorite thing about being a waterman, would you say? What is the, the favorite aspect of it? What, the favorite part of it? I yeah. Guess maybe it's the adventuring, going out and looking for seafood, uh -huh. crabs and art, and being able to, to see the signs where, where they'll be at. Like, yeah, we know all, we all know all those things. When you're a waterman, you're, you're your own man, in other words. You're, you're in charge. Right. Like if you got you a boat, and, you, and it's your boat and you're the captain of that boat, everything everything depends on you then. You're in charge of that boat, and that, that's a good feeling, to be in charge like that. And then you learn so much about the boat itself, just what she'll do, what, what, how she'll work and all that. Like that. A boat, and it's not like a woman. <laughs> a boat's not like a woman? Yeah, no, because, <laughs> see, all I got to do is touch that wheel, and, and she obeys everything I said. <laughs> and I say that to my wife. She has to say, oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> but, a, but a boat won't do that. A boat. And the only time a boat gets, like, on her own, with, if you get in a little too much wind and, and tide and waves, you know, then she'll, she'll react her own self. Then. You have, you have to know her tricks then. In other words, sometimes they'll, they'll dive like on you and say, oh my God, and cause you to uh, turn the boat over and that kind of stuff. So you have to know how far to go with her. She bought me an amount of storms. Really? But I, I knew just what to do. See, me, me it's a good Lord help me for it. I'd, I'd call on him the first thing when I got in trouble. And like at night sometime, I was coming down Potomac River one time and it, I never seen that more black in that in my life, and we couldn't see a thing. And I just took my course there and, and prayed to the Lord, and, and, and I knew I, if I headed right, I would see. And I, I, by my I seen the distance at that little wicked point down there on point. Look at big light wicked, and I knew it was all right. So as long as you stay on course. Would you say that being out? Being a waterman and being out in nature gets you closer to God. Yeah, okay. right, right. You, you know, like you're depending on His creation more than you would ordinarily if you're on the water because you know He. Really. You know the like the little poem I quoted last night. See, it's so great, you know. We, we know you know can't play with that. You got you got to go as far as you can go, and then you got to stop.